Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. As always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita, as you know, is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. So, Anvita, today's question, it's a question actually that's shown up a lot in my inbox in the last few months, but I'm bringing this one to you today. I'm going to read out one that's come in most recently. Basic question is still the same, but I'm actually bringing it to you today because I feel a little bit sort of emotionally connected to this particular question. I feel that there's, it's not just as simple as it seems. Um, it's one of these things that come up with, it's from a woman. And it's about a woman who is writing to us saying that her husband has been visiting a sex worker. And as I said, I'm going to read out the question to you. I'm going to tell you what the question says. But to me, I think, as she says, that there's a certain level of discomfort emotionally and mentally that goes with it, which I wish to address with you today. So basically, the question is that she says that her husband, um, over lockdown, decided to visit a sex worker. And obviously, he didn't tell her about it. But later on, when it came up, when it was discovered, um, and she approached him about it, he said, well, it was a need, and he, have to, and he had to do this. And she says that she's accepted that it was a need. Fair enough, men have needs. But that emotionally, she's finding it really hard to deal with. And I can totally resonate, I can totally sympathize with this. And I think I'd like to address it from this point today. Yeah, so this is a really interesting question because I think it's kept in a category in some ways where it's not an affair. You know, affair, like this whole idea, the myth that all affairs, you know, have to do with an emotional side and this is just physical. and physical, um, you know, being cheating physically is okay, but emotionally is problematic and it's been made out that way. Um, so one, I'm not sure I buy this whole idea of it's a need because I think a lot of patriarchy and permissions are based on this idea. If you look at, oh, it's okay to boys to have premarital sex because it's a need, or, you know, women are forced to provide sex within marriage because it's a male need, or it's okay for a man to remarry because he has needs, whereas it's not okay for a widowed woman to remarry because, you know, she doesn't have sexual needs. So there are, oh, I think a lot happens under this pretext of it's a male need. Um, and I'm not, I, as in, I'm not saying sexual, sexual um, choices or having sex is not a need, but I think it's equally for both genders. I don't think it's more for one versus the other. Uh, and more than that, I think, you know, everybody finds ways to compromise with the need, men and women. Um, so this idea that you were forced to do something, it was a choice you made and that choice is okay. But this idea that you were forced into something because it's a need, I find it a little bit problematic, you know. So I, as in, I know I'm having this immediate reaction, but I do have a reaction to this thing. And, you know, same way the men are having this big thing about no fat and we can hold ourselves back and, you know, it is the best thing to ever do is to not masturbate. And then, you know, we can't have it still that it's a male need. Um, so it just, it's yeah, a mix. You can't have it both ways because as you and I both know, the last uh, one that we did on semen retention and male masturbation from questions that we'd been getting from men and then the amount of arguments and complaints that we got from men saying, you're, you know, you're not qualified to talk about this. We are men, we are the ones with the semen. You're not even men. You don't have semen. How dare you talk about it? And how a lot of them said that we were wrong, you and Tanea, when you were saying from a medical perspective even, that it's probably a good thing to do, that we were wrong in saying that it was okay to masturbate, that 
it is much better and more important to absolutely hold it all back. And then to have the same sort of gender saying, well, I need to go off and have sex with a sex worker because it's a need. And yeah, so it doesn't work both ways. Yeah, and, and I and so just because we're mentioning that video, I was surprised by the aggression that it carried with it. And so it's just something I think just to note and reflect on uh, that the comments were, but you know, we don't want this video to become about that. And that's not the point. Um, but I think if we look at it from the woman's perspective, what I would like to say, like, that's my reaction to this, it's a need. Uh, but, but I do think that it's an interesting one to discuss because I think in general within partnerships, what gets discussed is that I, people don't consider it cheating if they've gone to sex workers or if I make it more gentler, going to strip clubs, right? Like that is so acceptable and men going for, uh, you know, boy strip and it's absolutely fine to have strippers there or, you know, plus there. So there is this acceptability, and and I remember telling you that I um, there is this acceptability within women that it's okay for their partners to visit strip clubs or be, engage in things, or if there's a sex worker involved because it's physical and it you know it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as having an affair. For me, I think it's individual to individual. If within a partnership, that's what you've discussed and that's what you've decided, that's fine. However, if in their partnership, you feel that's still breaking a contract, you know, the contract that you made with your partner was that of uh, fidelity when it comes to emotionally, physically and sexually, then it is still a break. It doesn't matter that the man paid for it and it was a sex worker versus a neighbor, you know, that it doesn't change it. It still breaks the contract. So as a woman, you have every right that if you feel like that trust has been broken or that there's cheating in the relationship uh, because that contract was broken for you. So I also find it interesting because she says that it's, you know, he, he kind of washed his hands off it. He got really, uh, you know, cross and said, TK, it was a need, you know, I had to do it. And she's had to accept it. And she has accepted it. But obviously, it doesn't wipe itself out of your head just because somebody else said, yeah, it's a need. And, you know, that's it. End of story. Emotionally, you're still kind of stuck with the leftovers of that. It does leave a terrible, terrible feeling inside you. And I find that, you know, so it's okay for him to have a need and say, well, it was a physical need and I've gotten it over, uh, out of my system. But her need is emotional. She needs to be able to get it out of her system. She needs to be able to talk it through. She's not being able to do that because her needs are not being met. And I just think that's really unfair. And I think that's what's actually making me quite upset about this question. Um, or about the situation is that, you know, her needs are not being met. Her need is simply that she does need to talk about it. I mean, frankly, I think any of us, if we were in that situation, we would get angry. I don't think any of us are that calm that you'd be able to say, okay, I understand and walk away. You do need to talk about it to some extent, but absolutely, that's think, being considered you know, nagging. She's not being allowed to talk about it. So what next, what do you do to get past it? Yeah, well, two things I'm thinking about. One, I think it's absolutely fair to have a conversation and feel like, um, you know, it, it has impacted you. I'll come back to this point. But the other part that we have to think about, and people might think I'm going extreme on this, but what we have seen when we do HIV AIDS uh, research is that a lot of times in UK, what we saw was that in some groups, women were testing more positive than gay men, you know, married women. And they would come and they would be really surprised. And they would be like, oh, but I'm in a monogamous relationship. The only sex I'm having is with my husband. What we later found out is that in 
some cultures and a lot of times what happened is that it would be permissible for men to go have sex for leisure now that could be with another man or it could be with other women like a sex worker and so what women thought was a monogamous relationship men were having sex outside the marriage and then coming back and having sex with the wives and unprotected sex because in their head it's a monogamous relationship and they were passing on hiv um to it similarly if we look at the indian um spread of hiv as well it was one of the large groups that they worked with initially when it started was the truck drivers because the truck drivers would go you know spot on spot and then have meet sex workers and have sex on their journey and then come back and give it to their wives uh once again they worked a lot with the sex workers on this route to start giving them condoms so it is i, I don't think it's an you know it's being made out as as if it's an irrational emotional reaction to somebody cheating it has an impact on a woman's health you know there are stis there are uh, other problems that she can now get from a partner so one disclosing is important because you know it impacts her body and two adequate protection or testing needs to happen so it is not as simple as breaking a contract emotionally it does have impact on a woman's body and a woman's health Yeah so I think that a lot of guys even if they decide okay we slipped we did it um they need to keep this in mind that they need to actually go and get themselves tested even if they think nothing has happened even from kissing you can actually pick up a certain number of um, transmitted diseases and so if you have been with a sex worker because let's face it by their very profession they have been with other people that is what they do they're being really good about testing themselves like so much education yeah. has happened i don't know where this is but obviously they are at a high risk group and that is why so much work has happened to constantly test them and thing and well i'm just thinking you did it in covid times so like are you like really keeping your wife safe by like you know why would you do this in covid times but anyway not just yeah. that i was just thinking he did it during the lockdown so you know where where are the where are the boundaries is it okay to say well i have needs and hence lockdown and covid does not stand in the way of fulfilling my needs i mean what are the where, where are the boundaries here you know absolutely i think the point you're making about the boundaries is such an important one and because i'm not saying that this is off limit or it does not happen in relationships there are a lot of partnerships now for whatever reason we keep speaking about sexual preferences and everything that might say okay you can have sex outside of marriage or the relationship i want to hear all about it or it's off limits you can do it but don't come and tell me about it but it's open you know there are open relationships we know that people say that they want to be in open marriages and things like this so there are lots of options the main point here is like you say is the boundaries what boundaries do you form as a couple as a partnership what do you say are the boundaries of a relationship and if those boundaries are broken it doesn't matter if it's with a sex worker a stranger or a person you know the fact of the matter is that it feels like it's a violation of what was decided or what was the sanctity of the relationship and once that's broken then it is the responsibility of both partners and more so the partner who broke it to build that trust back and for that you need to work on the relationship because something is broken and it needs to be mended yeah and there is like you started off by saying there's a strange kind of thinking pattern and i don't know where the story or where this narrative has come from that if it is just a one night stand or if you're not emotionally involved then it's no problem then it's fine to do whatever it's only a problem if it is an affair or if it's more than once with the same person or the um uh, it, there's an emotional attachment with the other person why does this narrative suddenly exists and why is it okay for a woman to have to deal with 
uh, her partner, her husband going off to have a one night stand and that's absolutely okay. But because I'm just thinking if it was the other way around, if the woman said, well, you know what, you're really bad in bed and I just really needed one good serious sexual experience, you know, sort of like my once a year thing. And I went off and did that. Can you just see what the reaction would be to that? Yeah, and, and so of course there's a gender disparity. Uh, I just want to say that I do think that affairs happen on both ends. Like I think women have affairs as well. Uh, but yes, well, they have to, I that guess, because is that's seen as like men have the affairs with. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and and like, but that is seen as oh she's breaking a house or whatever. It's not seen as oh I had sexual needs so I had a one night affair or something like that. But I I do. You know, it comes down to, I've heard so many friends say this actually to me, that, uh, you know, if he has an affair or if he has a one night stand, I would be broken, but am I going to leave him or I'm going to end the marriage over it? Like, realistically, is that going to happen? Uh, I don't think so. So, you know, we'll have to figure it out. And this permissibility in some ways that I'm not going to leave a marriage you know, over a one night stand. So, but I think there's a problem in this permissibility because somewhere you've decided it's okay for somebody to break your trust or break the boundaries, you know. Um, and it's not, like if there is a contract then it's not okay for somebody to do it. You can pre-decide that you want to be an open relationship, that's fine. And you can mend a relationship. I'm not saying everybody needs to walk out of a relationship because an affair has happened. You can work on it. But I'm just saying a pre-decision about it's okay, you know, it's okay. I think kind of that permissibility is problematic to me. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And yes, I think it's something that we've all got used to hearing and saying that it can happen. It does happen. And one should treat it with a certain level of perspective. So, you know, keeping a sort of functional sense of perspective to it, that it shouldn't be considered the end of the world. Um, and yes, you're right. It's it, it, we, you know, maybe we've kind of given ourselves permissibility on one side. It's not as if it's the same rule applying for the other gender as well. So yeah, it is on one side. And you're right, maybe we've fallen into a sort of habit. So either it becomes a two-way street or this permission is not okay without permission, if, if that makes sense. That, you know, if you're going to do something like this, it needs to be agreed upon in a certain level of I don't know, co-commitment is required. I, I'm just, I'm kind of lost. I have to say that this one came in and I've been thinking literally about how this woman would have felt, the emotions that go into it, the upheaval it causes, the, the level of insecurity that it causes inside you. And it's something that you're never allowed to voice. And I say this particularly, and this is why I was so keen to discuss this with you because you cannot go back to your husband who's already said, or I've said it, I won't do it again. Why are you going on and on at me about it? So she's not allowed to discuss it with him. If she ever goes to a friend, let's face it, most friends are, you know, we are all average people. And unless you become a therapist, you don't know how to advise the other person. So with most friends, um, the reaction is either, it's okay, men have needs, you have to deal with it, or he's a bastard, leave him. You know, which friend do you, have, do you know? Which average person do you know who'd be able to sort of really think deeply into the situation, come up with just the right level of, of advice? So really, this woman is left very, very alone. Yes, and, and for me, that thing that we were talking about permission and to your point that you were making right now is this, that somewhere we're giving permission that there will be an emotional upheaval and there your heart is broken and you have to deal with the law you know the loss of a relationship a loss. and when I say a loss of a relationship I don't mean the relationship is ending if you had an idea of a relationship if you believed you had this loving committed partner or husband and if that 
idea is now broken. So now you have to live with this new idea of, yes, this man loves me and yes, he's a committed partner, but there's a chance that he's sleeping with somebody else, even if it's a sex worker. You have to live with that, you know, that idea having broken, that dream having broken, and that's a loss. And there's a grieving process with it and there's a sadness to it. And like you're saying, there is a fear added to it, the, the anxiety, the fear, the next time he goes for a business trip, what is he doing right now? The paranoia that comes with it. And then, you know, how you're labeled and how do you stay sane every time that your partner is going on a business trip? How do you not get jealous or possessive or call him at night to check on him that it's difficult it's not an easy thing to do and that's why I'm saying both ways you have to communicate and mend the relationship otherwise it is a cracked relationship we'll just keep having issues you know can you imagine a woman then calling every business trip where are you now who are you with now and calling and checking and that's going to have a long-term effect on the relationship once again can i also say that actually i see it happening in the other direction as well because if you have a man who thinks that it's okay to do this the next time his wife is out he's going to be thinking maybe she's doing the same thing because you know your own behavior is what impacts your thinking process it's what you see in yourself that you think other people are doing it. It's a very natural sort of thing. You you judge other people by your own behavior, your, your own thought processes. Well, when you break a rule of a relationship, you provide yourself with some rationality, right? Like it's okay, it's one night, I have needs. These are all, you're, you're, you're making sense of something because you're breaking a rule. And once you you know, find an excuse for yourself, that excuse holds true for the other person as well, right? So I can see how, yes, it can be. So um, so I do agree with you that I think it can cause seeds of problems. Uh, the only thing is that I do think sometimes men believe that it's not breaking rules when you're going to a sex worker. Like I think those problems are when they're having an affair, but many times going to a sex worker and, you know, I'm not saying they're not male sex workers and I'm not saying women don't go to sex workers, but that is less heard of than men going to sex workers, you know? So it's, it's, it's that's permissible. Uh, but affairs are a problem and women in return might have affairs, you know, when they feel a void in the relationship, they might go for affairs and then they are judged differently to men because men were having sex with sex workers and women were having affairs. Uh, and that gets tricky as well. Now, it's a real issue, I think. Um, and it's not something that's going away very quickly. So I guess my question to you to finish this is not so much what is the advice for um, the two of them I mean like how are they going to get past this in the way of how are they going to fix this because I don't think that I think that that is something that we would normally be giving advice to the man in the relationship equally and I in most cases I can't see the advice being heard by both people I guess my question would be rather, how do we help the woman get past this? I mean, how do we help her to get past this emotional issue in her mind? I think it needs to come, one, I think, firstly, it's okay to grieve and it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to feel like you've been wronged rather than accepting it saying, oh, it's a male need and just lump it and deal with it. So it's one, it's okay to feel angry and upset and have a grieving process because there has been a loss, you know, thing. So one, that like, and give yourself space and time. Uh, it's okay to express to your partner how you're feeling rather than you know, say, uh, why will I ruin 
all the rest over this. Uh, I think it's going to impact your relationship. So try communicating, try expressing to your partner that something needs to be mended now because there's been a crack in the relationship and both people need to work on it. So, it, you know, hopefully you are able to reach your partner to have that, you know, that that communication is required, that mending is required. Um, express how you're feeling, it might impact your sex life. Express saying, this is how I am and this is where I'm feeling. Don't be apologetic about your reaction or feel like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but this is how I'm feeling sexually now, or I don't feel like having sex with you, or the idea of you being with other women comes and everything. Um, and I'm also, and, and there's no way to prevent this. I don't, um, I, if that's how you're feeling, go for it and do it. But sometimes the image becomes of this hysterical woman. Um, and, and once again, then it comes out as, oh, she's an irrational, hysterical woman, which I think is an image that society imposes or others impose to get out of it. So I don't want to, but I'm just saying that there are more, uh, you know, you can do this in a mature fashion with your partner, uh, with you having, like coming from an empowered place where you have every right to do this rather than coming from a completely broken victim place where you have no choices. There is a choice you're making. You're making a choice to stay in this marriage. It's fine to make that choice. But come from a place of knowing that you made this choice for whatever rational reasons that you decided to. And it's a choice you've made and he needs to be thankful that you, the cho that's the choice you made. Um, so I would say, try finding the power within you um, rather than being apologetic or thankful to your partner, you know, reverse it in some ways. Um, so yeah, yeah those are some of my thoughts. I think that's really good advice. And I hear you when you say that it's got to come from a point of empowerment. But I also think today I'm almost 60. And having been through all of these years of reacting, you know, at a certain age, when you're younger, you react a certain way. When you're upset, even to today, we would react in a specific manner. And it's only in sort of hindsight or in retrospect or in years to come that you find that inner calm or that inner strength which you can sort of you know react in the right way as you said because unfortunately you are 100 correct that if a woman who's had to deal with this reacts in the way that is her natural reaction which is for most of us she will be seen or labeled as the hysterical one, as this woman, oh, for goodness sakes, you know, she doesn't trust him. And she's the one who's going to be putting up with all of the bobs and the innuendo and all the nasty little cracks and remarks from people rather than him. And she's actually going to be the, the one being held um, to fault rather than him having brought her to this. And I just think that it's not always easy to be calm about this, especially when you're reacting to it. And I think I've always said that at points like this, you need a little tribe around you. You need at least a couple of people who you can, who you can confide in, who will give you their shoulder and support you through this so you can find your strength. I'm sorry if there's a lot of noise at the same time um, and whether there's a helicopter going overhead. I, I can't hear it. But yes. what I want to say to you is, and I we, I was talking to somebody about this, I think we need to react as authentically as we are feeling. What we need to do is own that reaction and not internalize this label. If we are going crazy, then you're going crazy because this is something worth going crazy for like you know if you're like being in you know if you're feeling like i paranoid if you're feeling anxious if you're like constantly checking where it is and everything that's a normal reaction what i'm saying is if that's how you're feeling that's how you're feeling don't let it harm you and don't internalize these you know have that tribe that's saying 
this is normal. I get it why you need to check his phone 20,000 times or you need to call him 20,000 times rather than being surrounded by people saying, you're being hysterical now. Like, why are you behaving like that? You will distance him more at this time or whatever. You know, whatever advice you get, what I'm saying is respond what internally you're feeling, respond that way. It is normal, but have a tribe that is, you know, supporting you and saying, okay, this feels normal, but if it's going on for two months and three months and, you know, there is things that have moved in the relationship that they can come in and say to you, like, you know, like mm -hmm. hold back now, I think. Back. So have that positive tribe around you who can help you see things um, better in some ways. You know, Anvita, you and I have been talking for a long time about opening a sort of chat room podcast thing for women only and uh, where women can come together and literally we can discuss all of these things that come up you know some of it is just merely emotional and it's somebody that sometimes you just need an, um, an answer even to that and I think maybe the time has come need to yeah. we need to get on and start that very very soon um and so yes for everybody listening out there uh, look out we are actually coming up with this new podcast which will be entirely women orientated answering all the little emotional mental physical sexual questions that women send into us because i feel that we feel that there isn't enough space given to women's questions generally but to come back to this I guess we want to finish by saying that we totally understand that you feel emotionally and mentally really, really distressed. We understand that it's not something that you can take to your partner and get him to acknowledge what, it, what it's doing to you and that you need time to get over it. It's not something that's going to disappear overnight because, well, I said, okay, I won't do it again. I said, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Why the hell are you going on thinking about it? We understand that it doesn't work like that. I think any man will also understand if he was on the receiving end of it, that it doesn't work like that. This is just a defensive reaction from most people that I've said, I'm sorry, why are you going on? We also believe that you have every right to have your reactions, your expressions, the way that you wish to have them. Don't, as Anvita just said, don't internalize it. Don't say, oh my God, I shouldn't be behaving like this, even though I really feel like behaving like this, but I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be, because this is going to impact your mental health otherwise. So go ahead and own your reaction. And this is the point Anvita has been trying to make very, very strongly. If you want to come out of this stronger, Karma, own your reaction, give yourself the permission and the power to react the way that you want to. Don't come to it from a victim's point of view saying, I can't do anything about it. I have to put up with this, but I feel like, oops, I feel like crying about it. I feel like saying something about it, but I can't, I can't, I can't. Acknowledge that you want to do this and say, I want to do this. And that literally empowers you. Just that one little decision saying, I'm doing this because I want to rather than because I have to. And I think between us, we feel that this is the way forward for you emotionally because your husband's behavior can't necessarily be controlled. And more than likely, if he said to you that he's not going to do it again, he probably won't. It probably was a one-off. It probably was just something slipped. Lockdown has been extraordinarily hard on all of us. We've all reacted in different ways. It's had a really weird impact on all of us. So more than likely, it won't happen again, but give yourself the permission to be upset. Absolutely. I, I, I just feel like um, it's not, it, it many times, um, you know, we are told more and more that we should just accept it. It's normal. It's it's not a big deal for men to go to sex workers. Or I said, like it is a gentler form. It's like very normal for men to go for uh, to strip clubs. And I've heard a lot of women say, "Oh, I go to strip clubs with him." 
and that's fine you know it's okay to go to strip clubs it's okay if you want to go to strip clubs with them i'm not saying there's anything wrong but if you are not comfortable and you don't like the idea it's okay to express that that you don't like the idea and you're not okay with your partner going to it it's fine and then you can have a discussion about it so don't feel you just have to accept it because that's the message given to you thank you anvita um i hope that everybody listening in did get a lot out of this i have to say that it's helped me a lot anvita thank you for this particular conversation because this question was really upsetting me it really was bothering me emotionally thinking of what this girl is going through so um not just her as i said this has been one of those strange um questions that's come in a lot over recent months so i really hope that this is going to help a lot of people out there in terms of all of your other questions your worries your concerns we know that there are so many times that there's nobody else you can turn to you can come to us i am on info.seema.anand@gmail.com um we understand that also there's a lot of questions that come in and we want you to understand that we can't always get to your question or respond to your problem immediately sometimes it has to go on a list which is trust me a very long one because uh, there's a lot of questions uh, that come in to us but we are over here for you and we do try our best as far as possible on the other hand if you feel that just this generic answer is not enough for you and you need deeper consultation you need therapy you can always approach anvita who is on anvita.madanbehel@gmail.com and the spellings are down below so um we look forward to hearing from you in the meantime do please stay safe and we will see you again very soon see you soon